So hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you my professional and personal thoughts in regards to the visit of Harry and Meghan in New York. If you haven't seen my first video, I did speak about my thoughts of leading up to this and what I believe should or should not happen. Um, and this is gonna be my psychoanalysis, if you like, of what I saw of the footage and everything else in between. So if you wanna join me in this video, you should know what to do by now. And if you're new here, grab your drink of choice, whatever it may be, what you are sitting back relaxing with to watch this video, uh, drop it in the comments, uh, as I always like to read what you are drinking. And I just wanna say that some of you kinda of go, oh, I'm really boring, I drink water. That is not boring. Nothing is boring in my opinion. Water is incredibly healthy. So at the end of the day, if that's what you enjoy, it's not boring. So grab your drink of choice. And if you wanna add a little something, something to that drink of choice, because as the flag says behind me, you got it. It's five o'clock somewhere. So grab your drink and let's dive right in. So getting my psychotherapist head on and feeling frustrated and angry about Harry and Meghan head on. <laughs> I feel like I can't really talk about them much now without laughing because it's very, I try, I try to be diplomatic. I try to look at this really just from the psychotherapist analytic viewpoint however I'm a human being and I have my own thoughts and opinions um, and sometimes my therapist hat slips off as you know and when I'm watching social media because I like to kind of see what people are saying the the kind of in a way the feel of the room and oh dear oh dear the feel of the room is not good can we just start by talking about the seven car convoy with apparently New York police um, escort to go one block. These climate warriors <laughs> took seven cars to go one block. <laughs> I'm sorry, but when I read that, I literally had to go, no. And I had to kind of go through different, di different? <laughs> different sources to see if this was true. And it is. Um... <laughs> Seven cars? <laughs> I mean, is that for our personalities? Maybe they all needed a car of their own. I don't know. But the ego, the ego of these two to try and make themselves seem important. I understand the car they're traveling in. I even understand that one car for security, say, I can even get my head around that. But seven? <laughs> what did they think was going to happen? They're not that important. And it shows because nobody was there. Nobody. Apart from maybe a couple of their fans. Um, I mean, when you look at the different, I mean, this must be, in all honesty, this must be eating them up. This must be eating them up because this wasn't a surprise visit. This was plastered all over the news. So people would have rocked up. Um, they knew where it was, what was happening. They would have been camped out all day. 
I am surprised their PR team wasn't on the street handing out tickets, kind of going, we'll put money in your bank account if you just show up and act like you like them. Um, and when people were interviewed, they were just like, Meh, they're irrelevant. New York does not forget. New York does not forget. When you come out and you lie the way you do, people remember. You know, you basically accuse New York of being unsafe publicly. Now, what whether people believe that or don't believe that is irrelevant, but you basically have lied. You you've created New York to be, you know, you lied and said New York was unsafe. You went after the paparazzi. You 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 just simply lied and people do not forget that. And that showed because nobody was there. When you look at the the welcome that Prince William got, the, the queuing up for hours when Prince William and Catherine went to New York, they were queuing up in the rain to see them. They were standing for hours and hours to catch a glimpse of them. These two turn up in their seven car convoy and there was, there's like probably two people there. And you can just see as the cars are going along, people are just not, they're like, just not bothered. I'd imagine they see celebrities all the time, so it's not really a big thing. So then that goes even, gives even more credence to the fact that when William and Catherine turned up or when Prince William was there, um, people were just everywhere to catch a glimpse of him. And he was there shaking hands. And I think that's why they are so unlikable. Because the thing is, with most celebrities, yes, most celebrities want, apart from select few, want privacy. They want to go about their daily lives because they are in the public eye. So they want to go about their daily lives sort of privately. But these two, they're so desperate to be seen as famous. Well, to be fair, Meghan, because Harry has had it. I mean, how far Harry has fallen is just, it's like he's he's gone from the highest point down to the lowest. <laughs> Because that's exactly what's happened. Harry has had the adulation. Harry has had people queuing up and wanting to speak to him, shake his hand, touch him even. He's had that. Since being with Meghan, he has gone from being up there to, well. But for her, she is desperate to be seen. Desperate to be part of the famous elite and to some degree marrying Harry got her an element of that because let's face it it got her the interview with Oprah it got her the interview with Ellen it got her column inches nobody was bothered about her before meeting Harry so she's got the infamy should I say but she is not liked and the Posts in the media, I think, were uh, very mixed. Some were, you know, oh, you know, Harry and Meghan, mental health, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then there were a lot that kept sort of bringing up the new, because I think they're desperate to forget this new, new York car chase thing, but the, but the media won't let them forget that. So it's kind of like, oh, Harry and Meghan back in New York after, you know, the car chase that, you know, never happened. But it was more about the event and the things that she did um, and where it just went wrong. And like I say, the, the fact that they've been hauled over the coals for the seven car convoy. Who thought that was a good idea? It has to, it had to have been Megan. It had to have been. They truly, really do try to act like they're, but even the royal family don't behave that way. <laughs> you know they do when it's a state event when we see that but that's because there's a lot of the royal family so there's a lot of security that follows so when there's a state event understandably so but when they're just traveling around as normal they don't have seven cars <laughs> so yeah so first of first we have we have that then people i've seen people critique what she is wearing, that she was camouflaged to the chair. I mean, I, I, I'm guessing who thought, who probably didn't look at the optics, 
because she kind of was. She literally was wearing the same colour as the chair. I didn't dislike the outfit. I'm, I'm trying to be diplomatic here. Again, I, what the thing, okay, so the thing I notice more than anything else is I'm actually really beginning to think that she doesn't have a stylist. Or if she does, I'm sorry, but that stylist needs to be fired because Megan doesn't wear clothes that fit her body shape. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all for women. I mean, here I am. Look, I'm 50 and I'm wearing a scarf and glitter in my hair. So I'm all for people rocking and doing their own thing. I personally don't give a flying whatever what people think in in a sense I will do what I want to do and I applaud that and I think everyone should be like that what I do feel is it's interesting to me that she was kind of wearing I mean I I don't want to I don't like going into the kind of copying Catherine thing but I mean we know that narcissists do do this because they have no self-identity and of course, Catherine has been coming out recently in her trouser suits and she's been looking absolutely amazing. But let's be fair, Princess Catherine could wear a black sack and still look amazing. But she does. She looks amazing in these trouser suits. Um, and it's been publicly noted that she's been wearing these trouser suits and she looks stunning. So it's almost like, you know, all of a sudden, Megan's coming out wearing like a trouser something. Um, well, it's sort of a suit, but an off the shoulder. I just, I don't know if I felt that it was the right look for her. I, well, I just, it, it wasn't, it wasn't the best. I've seen her in some nice things. It wasn't the best, I will say. I want to talk about there's two main things that I sort of, that really struck a chord with me. Sorry, three main things. One was that Harry looked in nearly all pictures, apart from when he's actually talking, he looks again so miserable, so downtrodden. When they walk onto the stage, again, she walks ahead of him. Now, okay, I get that they're not officially working royals anymore, albeit that they're trying to act like royals within America, but they're not. When you're using the royal titles, when you're using the status that being part of the royal family gives you, you need to kind of decide what you're doing because in one hand, they, they want to utilise that, but when it comes to the royal protocol of Harry being the most important one, she doesn't like that. She wants to be seen as first. And Harry literally just follows on like some little lost boy. Um, and then, of course, she gets into her usual word salad, the stuff that where she, she opens her, unfortunately, she speaks and not really much sense comes out or she plagiarises or something happens. And she talks about, and if you don't understand about narcissists, let me tell you just a little something of what narcissists will do. Narcissists will put you down in any way they possibly can to make you feel small. And when you have someone, especially in the public eye, they will use that platform to do the same thing. But they do it in such a way, a bit similar to gaslighting, where it's plausible deniability. It's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't think of that. And she did it. There was a poignant moment when she talks, she gives some weird analogy of a car and she mentions seatbelt. Now, bear in mind, this is about mental health. They're talking about online activity and that parents have gone through the unaliving of their own children due to the bullying that can happen online, which, don't get me wrong, is very, very serious. Um... You know, I've had firsthand professional experience of working with parents who've gone through something along these lines. And it is utterly traumatic. Losing a child is traumatic in every way. Um, but sort of this is specifically what they're sort of talking about in, in again, using. I mean, watch my first video I, that I think they're using parents and children to manipulate their agenda anyway. But 
she goes on to talk about cars and seat belts. And I'm listening to this and thinking, you know exactly what you're doing. Anyone that is watching that is going to understand that the connection to the cars and seat belts, etc., is going to be a huge reference to Harry's and William's mother. Because we all know that the biggest thing that has come out is that she wasn't wearing a seatbelt in a car. Why on earth would you mention something that's triggering? And the reason being is because she can get to him and she will want to remind him at any moment that she can affect him, that she can get to him. She monopolates that conversation. She dominates the, the, the talk on the stage. When Harry's talking, her face, she's glaring at him. And this is very classic for narcissists as well. When the attention is not on them, they don't like it. You know, the, like I said, you've only got to look at their body language to see that there is no unity with these two. But another thing then she goes on to do is she goes on to talk about being a parent is one of the most important things for her. And watch her face. And I'm going to put the video up here so you can see. What I would suggest is actually, I'll, I'll let it play, but because I mean, I know some of you, many of you struggle with her voice. I do, to be fair. So turn the volume down because to be honest, you don't need it. You've only got to look at her body language. I feel fortunate that our children are at an age, again, quite young, so this isn't in our immediate future. But I also feel frightened by how it's continuing to change, and this will be in front of us. As I say, being a parent, the days are long, but the years are short. When you're talking about your children, the children that you supposedly love and adore and they're your life and they're everything, you tend to look people in the face because it's so important. These are your children. You're proud. She doesn't. She looks down a lot while she's mentioning the children. And body language doesn't lie. When you look down, 
It's usually something you're uncomfortable with, whether it be you're being dishonest or you're talking about something that's uncomfortable. And we know that Megan's baseline is that she's very much, when it's all about her, she's very much engaged. When she's given her word salad, she's very much engaged. But her body language doesn't lie and she's talking about the children being a mother and she looks down. And, and then she talks about the fact that her children are the most important thing that's ever happened to her. And then she suddenly, it's almost like suddenly something clicks and then she looks at sort of Harry. And she's like, well, aside from Mary being married to this one. If being a, a mom is the most important thing in my entire life. And um, outside, of course, being a wife to this one. This one? How demeaning is that? She's gone from Harry, H, my husband, to now... This one has this one, this this old thing, this, this this guy over here that I married and gave me the platform that I have now. Um, yeah, him, you know that guy. <laughs> um, it's just unbelievable. But the biggest thing for me is that they're sitting there talking about mental health and talking about online bullying, online trolling, the things that happen to children. And then because of the bullying that goes, that happens to them, they, they unalive themselves. And she sits there and talks about being a parent is the most important thing in her life. That right there tells you this woman has zero empathy when you're sitting and literally you've got parents in the room or people are listening to this who have lost a child, who cannot even have children and are desperate to have children. Or perhaps they're restrained from their children and they're going through the trauma of, of something along those lines. Or maybe their grandchildren, they can't get to see their grandchildren even. She does not know how to be a parent because she isn't, in my opinion, a parent. And that shows you right there that she doesn't have a clue. Because most people that have empathy, who know why they're talking, like when I come on this camera, I know. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that mistakes can happen. I have fluffed up on quite a few occasions unintentionally. But for the most part, I am very aware that when I talk about situations, I'm aware that something could be triggering. I'm aware that not everyone has the same benefits or, in, or uh, privileges, perhaps, that I might have or other people might have. I'm aware that when I talk about a subject that this might be very upsetting for them. But she just goes blah, 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 blah. And she does not care. It's all about her. And that shows you when she's not thinking, she messes up royally, completely. And that was one of them. When you're sitting in a room that are, and you're talking to parents who, like I say, some of them might have even gone through something like that. And you're sitting there lying and talking about how being a mother is the most important thing. How insensitive could you possibly be? But again, nobody picks up on that. Why not? You know, and I... And I and, and th when I'm watching things like this, it angers me so much because these two are absolutely, in my opinion, not qualified to talk about anything regarding mental health. Like I've said in my last video, when you have gone on television publicly attacking both of your families, lying, trashing, attacking other people in whatever form, not caring about their mental health. What right have you got to go and preach to anyone? People in glass houses should not throw stones, but these two do not care. As long as they get their column inches, they do not care. But it has backfired because there's nothing really that has come out from this that has put them back in the good graces of the people because everything they do is a huge fail. 
know, you've got Harry that sat there looking just completely lost, like he didn't really know why he was there. Anytime he spoke, she just took any opportunity to jump in and take over the conversation. And then we have this little gem, this video clip, which I'm going to put up here. where they're standing and they, I guess they're just saying hello to people or they're saying thank you to people, I'm not really sure. And Harry goes to shake the hand of this man that comes in and you can see that he's kind of going for Harry and she does her classic, push him out the way, I'm coming in first. She is putting Harry in his place of how she sees him any opportunity that she can and the fact that she's also doing things quite blatantly as well um and so what i would probably say i don't know i don't know actually if this happened at the end or the beginning i'm i think it happened at the end so by this point she's probably fed up and angry with him he's probably not performed the way she wanted him to so she's fed up with him and then they leave but there's no, like when you watch anything that let's say William and Catherine do, there are people that wait outside. I mean, you've only got to look and I'm going to do a little bit of a palate cleanser here because I'm going to talk about a little bit about William and Catherine in Birmingham. You, uh, Catherine looks stunning. She's wearing this two-piece, um, this beautiful top and a skirt. And I think the skirt was something like £135 or dollars even, I'm not sure. And the top was around the same. Her whole outfit, I'd probably say with, with everything else, was just, just very minimalistic, but just she, she just makes everything look stunning. Whereas, I'm going to be honest, Megan's was something like nearly two grand. You know, Megan doesn't know, she, she just genuinely doesn't read the room in anything. Whereas Catherine, she's very mindful and she interacts with people. She's so personable. You know, she comes outside and she chats with the students and she walks over to them. So does William. He make, They both make a point. In fact, they all do in the royal family of make a point of going and speaking to the crowds, the people that have waited outside for them. Harry and Megan don't. They literally get in a vehicle, get out of a vehicle and maybe give one little tiny gesture of a wave or smile and then that's kind of it. They don't talk to people. And the reason being is because it has to be controlled. This, there's a reason why they tried to control when they went to, the, to that school. And I'm not even gonna go into the fact that they turned up at a, some school in Brooklyn because that frustrates me as well. This is what they do. She's utilizing um, this community of people and yet it should be all oh, everyone mixed everyone because as, as human beings we are we are that as on on this planet we are that we are a beautifully mixed array of colors and it's to be celebrated and when you see the royal family go anywhere you see that but with harry and Meghan, it is pretty much they are again manipulating this because they know predominantly that's their fan base. And that is why I get so angry about them. You know, they are manip trying to manipulate you know, the minds of young people acting. And, and, and like I said, and the fact that she turned up in this uh, let Letterman jacket. And obviously people have spoken about the fact that this is something that Diana wore. And I think she just tries to make herself seem relatable and she's just not. And what, again, frustrates me is that people that see, they see her for, say, 10, 20 minutes and they come away and they're like, she's so lovely. She's so relatable. 
It's called love bombing. This is what narcissists do. They will perform. They will be the most amazing person. How do you think they suck somebody in? Because it's exactly what they do. But they don't do anything after that. There's no follow through. There's no consistency. She turns up at something, acts all smiles, acts charming. Everyone thinks she's lovely. And then that's it. Her job is done. Her acting role is done. That's what a narcissist does. So... To me, this was, again, something that they did that was a huge fail. And whoever thinks that getting these two to talk about mental health is the right thing to do needs the head read, in all fairness. Because I think the subject absolutely needs to be talked about, but not by two people who didn't give a damn about their own family or the repercussions of anything that they do that could happen when they tell the lies that they tell they don't think about the mental health of the effect of what that can have on somebody Megan on her family where's her care for her family her father oh this angers me more because of the field that I'm in I see firsthand every day the effects of someone who's been in who's come out of narcissistic abuse someone who's still in it whether it be with a parent or a partner or or a, a child or a sibling i see the first hand effects of what happens to a parent when they lose a child and when she sits there and talks about being a parent is the most amazing thing knowing and i'm sitting there knowing that she's lying with no care or no due thought for anyone who might be listening to her. This is why, and I say this time and time again, this is why the titles need to be stripped. That is why they need to be, in my opinion, taken off anything to do with the royal family, especially her. Harry, I guess, will always be Prince Harry. But she needs to go. She's She is dangerous. Harry is just the poor sap that's following her along, in all fairness. Why he's still with her, I don't know. Like I've said, I think there's blackmail involved. I think she's got something on him. Or even she knows too much in regards to, like I say, I think that maybe it's the truth regarding the children. And she's evil. She will come out with her claws and she won't care what lies she tells to make herself look the victim and I think the royal family know that so I'm guessing that they're probably trying to get things in a row before the divorce happens but I think then the little sweetener is that it was a fail nobody turned up they're supposed to have this huge fan base where were they where were they where was the cult squad that give apparently all this money to help them, but yet couldn't get on a flight to go see them? Where were they? Where was Mr. Boozy? A known troll that they have paid, who was on their Netflix mocu-series talking about online bullying when he's one of the biggest out there. Paid by them and the likes of AH, who go after people lying. What did he care about my mental health when he was putting out there that I was a fake therapist, trying to uh, and and saying some of the most horrendous things about me that I was. Well, I'm not even going to go there, but some of the things that he said about me in my prof not that he ever know it doesn't know me at all. Did he care about my mental health or the mental health of perhaps people that were working with me that might have seen some of his posts? Did he care about them? Nope. That doesn't matter. I don't matter. And that is why the media do not do their job properly because it wasn't that long ago that they did that Netflix mocu-series and it wasn't that long ago that he appeared on that and they know full well 
what he's been doing. And yet, no one calls them out. I haven't seen anything of that being mentioned anywhere of the fact that these two are talking about mental health, but actually employed someone to go after people and affect their mental health. The hypocrisy is just astounding, in my opinion. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel and you would like to do so, so you do not miss future uploads, please do. And don't forget to click all on the notification bell um, because otherwise you might miss the notifications as my videos get uploaded. If you haven't joined my other channels, I've got Tea and Therapy and Coffee and Celebrities where I do the very same sort of thing, but talking about other celebrities on the channel. My first video in regards to Marilyn Monroe has been uplif uplifted, <laughs> no, up uploaded. Um, the second one will be going up next week. Um, my tea and therapy is pretty much what it is. It's life coaching and therapy tips where I talk about aspects of mental health, including narcissism. So if there's things that you might want to understand about yourself or somebody else, that could be the channel for you. If you haven't seen my son's channel, also please go across and check that out. All the links in the description box below are for everything that you need. My email address is there. My PO box if you want to write to me or if you would like to send me a gift, which some of you do, which is really lovely. Um, you can buy my bubble merchandise. That is also on there. I'm also on Instagram. I'm also on TikTok. Um, anywhere else? Rumble. I'm also on Rumble. <laughs> Um, I'm on so many places I forget where I'm at <laughs> um, so yeah so go across and follow me there on all, all of those as well if you are there um, in the meantime be vigilant if you have children that are on social media keep an eye on them because that's the other thing as well Harry and Meghan forget that as parents most of us have common sense and most of us actually um, can look out for our own children we don't need those two who are pretend fake parents telling us what to do um so yeah and just a little thing to add these are so many people have commented on my hair thank you so much <laughs> you're so you honestly I, I i have the kindest loveliest support system here um so these are actually extent uh, are clip in sorry not clip in tape in extensions so what i do is when i color my hair i bought some blonde uh tape in hair extensions because i I like to just change things up. I'll be probably wearing blue next week. And I put the same colour that I put on my hair on this, but because it's blonde, they go lighter. And then I just tape them and put them in, stick them in my hair and they last. They're really, really good. I mean, if I if I didn't wash my hair, say, I'd probably say these would last a good few weeks. Um, but with washing my hair, you can still wash your hair as long as you're really careful. And they still stay in and they probably last a couple of weeks maybe this is glitter and these are clipping these are clipping little glitter strands um which i love um so yeah so for those of you who ask um that is literally and these i got from amazon they were very cheap they are 20 pounds and you got like something like i don't know 10 10 pieces um and then these were five pound and I actually got them from TikTok shop and they like say they're clipping. So there you go. So um, and also as well, yes, for people that have asked, I do have freckles. For the most part, I do cover them. However, I normally cover them with foundation, um, but they, I, I do have them and they are there. Um, so I just decided to, to let my freckles roam free. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that sometimes, especially in the summer, unfortunately, I get freckles here and it looks like I've got a moustache. So I have to be careful. I have to slather um, sun cream on there so they don't come out. But yeah, so there you go. So like I say, have a great weekend and I will see you next week in the next video. As always, I love you. I appreciate you. But most of all, I respect you. Mwah. Bye bye. So I just want to give my thoughts as to what is going on in Israel at the moment. Obviously, I'm sure most of you by now have heard the footage or seen the footage of these people, these young people at a festival. And um, I believe they're called the Hamas. I'm I, I, sorry if I say that wrong. Um, 
paraglided in basically and went after the young people that were there and a lot of people were unalived and a lot of people were captured and there has been some horrendous footage that has come out. What saddens me as much as what I see are the comments. I was watching some of this last night and I have to say, sorry, didn't expect to get emotional over this, but you know what? It is what it is. Um, and the comments of... I mean, don't get me wrong, there, there was a, so many that were just like sending thoughts, prayers, etc. But there were also so many that were almost congratulating what was happening and saying that these some of these people some of the horrendous footage that I was watching um they deserved it and I just think air as a world have we gone so wrong that we celebrate the loss of anyone's life um, now don't get me wrong I'm not going to get into the sides because I think as a human being the control the taking of someone's life the abuse of someone an innocent person it can never be okay can never ever ever be okay and social media can be such an amazing thing at some you know when we see some of the funny videos and the, the, the wonderful things that can be shared but what I'm seeing more often than not now is the real depraved side of social media and it really does hurt my heart to see that when these I mean you I mean as a parent I cannot even begin to, to you know even as a as a therapist I cannot even begin to walk in the shoes of somebody who is watching their child on being paraded on social media or finding out on social media that one of their family members has been taken or the unthinkable and you've got people clapping and applauding or making funny comments and we know that a lot of people they mask hurt and pain with humour but that's it's not the time and regardless like I say of which side you fall on whether you because obviously this is going back a very long time I think we all have to agree that the hurting of innocent people should never be applauded, should never be celebrated. And I just want to say, from me personally, I don't know if I have anyone here that is going through um, something very similar or they've got family members there or they're there. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But if I have, my heart goes out to you and I'm deeply sorry for whatever is happening and I wanted to use this platform just to say that because it didn't feel right passing it by and just talking about those two which actually in the great scheme of things makes me so angry when they're doing what they're doing it just felt that I wanted to say that and I think you know at least I'm very grateful for the people on this channel that we come together and we're very 
thoughtful and kind and we respect one another and it's just a real shame to me that this doesn't go on more in the world imagine what a beautiful place this world would be if we all come together like that instead of being so divided and there being so much hate in the world and like I say don't get me wrong I understand the need for freedom I don't condone anyone that controls anyone's freedom but you know to me the people that are fighting for their freedom these people they are entitled to have that in this especially in this day and age but I also have to say that I don't stand with what is happening either um, and seeing that I just want you to know this comes from a place of love and I think that we should all come together rather than be be divided but I am lucky and grateful to be in a country that for the most part doesn't control what I think say or do I am grateful for that so I do know that this is a very terrible time for all involved